I can start with uh, our thoughts and prayers continue to be with Armarian Smith and his family. Uh, definitely grateful for the outpouring of support, Spartan Nation, and so many as he's going. Him and his family are going through this, this tough time. Um, recap a little bit about Saturday. I uh, was pleased with the amount of work we got done. Over 100 snaps of live scrimmage. Got all four phases and special teams, quality reps there. Uh, and when I say quality, we're learning about where we're at, and it wasn't flawless by any stretch of the imagination, but it was really good work to kind of recognize where we're at after, at that time, 11 practices. And so this is a huge week moving forward. We'll scrimmage again, the plan on, on this coming Saturday. Um, and so we got to keep pushing, getting to that point of camp where you know, bodies ain't feeling great, a lot of plays, a lot of install, all of that. We got to keep pushing through that and be in this constant state of improvement. So where, where are you at? Like, are you where you thought you would be in the integration process, or? You know, I say I thought where we'd be. I thought we were a work in progress. Um, I think each day you make some strides, and then you have a setback in a day or two when you know more install comes and maybe some more flaws you're trying to learn about. You know, in individual players or schemes or sides of the ball. Um, so, look, I feel good of where we're at and really the progress we're, we're making. Besides being injury-free, what would you most like to see the next 18 days? Well, 18 days, we got to tighten up so many details on all, all three phases, for that matter. Um, we are definitely want to create this depth and depth chart, and we want more and more guys earning the opportunity to be on the field so you can have a deep team. What was that gauge between 22 starters? How many do you feel like? Yeah, I don't know about an exact number. We definitely got some guys that are that are going to start, but not at uh, not at every position. I mean, this thing is competitive, um, and we talked even last night as a team. We want to be a, a squad that we've got multiple guys that can go in the game. We want to be playing full speed, speed with great effort, and once in a while you're going to get gassed and feel confident with the next guy going into the game, and that's what these next couple of weeks are about. Where do you feel the biggest area of competition right now is? Yeah, I think. Uh, the linebacker, inside linebacker, we got multiple guys in that room can help us, and so we don't play seven at a time. That that thing is competitive. Uh, the receiver position, you know, Montori's uh, taking a couple of days to heal up a little bit, not long term, but that's been awesome for more receivers to get opportunities in that position. Group's been, been comp uh, pretty competitive. What were you most pleased with on Saturday as far as on field what you saw? Yeah, I mean, obviously you're looking at both sides of the ball when you're doing the, the offense-defense thing. I did think the defense showed some great resilience. Offense put some longer drives together but did not finish in the end zone. Uh, you know, we ran over 100 plays. We had two turnovers. You, you know, with those kind of numbers, we want to take the ball away more um, on that. You know, we had some you know third down efficiency defensively really good, except for we converted on a few extra longs on third down, which is great by the offense. You guys come out of it pretty healthy. You mentioned Montoya overall. Yeah, play? nothing uh, the long, long term. Like I say, getting that point in camp, we definitely got some guys that we're being smart with, or bumps and bruises, but nothing, uh, no guys are missing the season right now. How hard is it to tell when the offense makes big plays like that if it's that or? I know. It, it, uh, it's not always easy. I mean, sometimes if the big plays are coming off a bust by the defense, that, you can, that tells you something. But when things are contested, both sides and guys make plays. You, you can try to separate. Well, uh, that was a, a better play than just giving, giving like a freebie on a bust. Uh, you kind of expect guys. defense to be ahead of the offense at this stage, and if so, was that the case? Yeah, uh, you, you do. Because, um, again, offense, all 11 guys, you know, in the procedure showed up a little bit, which is typical for a first scrimmage, a couple false starts type of thing. So that's not shocking to have, you know, the defensive side being a little ahead on the majority of scrimmage. Um, you see the defense get yeah. in Grasp of, this, of the system carried over from the spring. Yep. Better than the spring? Yeah, way better than the spring as it comes. And, you know, I think, again, this defensive staff, Joe Rossi does a good job in regards to simplifying the thing and the detail of it. We're not there exactly on our detail of it, but I do feel like from spring to where we are now, uh, a lot of progress. How did you guys approach the last few days? You got going to film with those guys to kind of look back, and then I guess this week you mentioned about it being today. We obviously did. Yep. Things you want to see. What are the big details that you want to see ironed out between scrimmage one and two? You know, I think identification offensively, making sure we are targeted correctly, get our pad level down. Just overall, offensively, we want to see it. Defensively, continue to step up on our communication. Again, those coaches been all over them, but you know, let's face it, offenses aren't just going to line up in one spot and stay there. When motions go across, the calls coming, awareness of situations needs to take another step. Whether we're third down, we get some two minute coming. We've done that a little. We'll do it again tomorrow. I mean, just awareness of the situations. 
When you've got Eden and you've got weapons like Bellane and Montori, how valuable is that for the defense? It's great. They need to go against good competition, both sides of it, right? And, you know, we're a better team. When I talk about it, you should get exposed in practice if you're not playing full speed with great technique and knowing what you're doing. And so on both sides, if we can raise our level of play, that's only going to help our team. How do you think the whole line's coming along? When we talked to you last week, you mentioned the front seven have been doing some good practices. Mm-hmm. Some pad practices and scrimmage, where was the old line? They're progressive. They are. Um, you know, it's nice, you know, Brandon and Stan at left tackle, getting some quality work there. You know, coming in, Luke Newman's doing a nice job at guard. That was a nice addition we didn't have in the spring. Um, so they're they're working. Rakeem Johnson, true freshman, um, he's had a bunch of good snaps, athletic. So we kind of like where that group's. And a, a typical Jim Mahalachek old line, we got multiple guys playing multiple spots. They're not just staying at one spot. And so we're working through that to create some depth. How did Aiden and Brian and the linebackers and the Joe, how did they work in kind of like the first by fire trial. Yeah, I think you saw it. We've been using the walkie-talkie for the direct communication. What was really new is we did take the tablets out there and so tried to recreate that on the sidelines, adjustments in between series and things. So that was new on everybody. Uh, we'll try to recreate it again this next Saturday. But overall, I felt like the process, the procedure of getting the call in, getting the ball snapped was pretty good. Is there a, you sound, I don't want to say you sound different than your urgency, but you sound like somebody who can feel the game Coming, it's getting closer, closer, I know. <laughs> yep. Is, yep. Is that, is that, I mean, is there a, a, a heightened sense of urgency after the first scrimmage? You sort of feel you're less than three weeks out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, guess you're getting closer. There's things to get fixed. We talked about this week kind of you know, being a week of separation. And, you know, I think good teams are not going to just go through the motions and get through camp. We're constantly improving, and we got to push this. The, the middle of camp, like I say, bodies of tomorrow. Even on the mental side, we got to keep pushing on it. And then let's face it, separation in regards to depth chart. Guys are trying to earn spots, earn playing time, earn getting on the bus for travel squads. So it's a huge week. Some new staff situations, uh, meet and blue in the secondary and Chad and Keith with the special teams. How's that cohesion working out? Feeling really good. Start with the secondary, those two guys working together. I like, I love the fact we got a lot of DBs. And I love the fact that we got two guys to be able to drill down on two positions, but they also work together, right, with communication and all of that. I think on the special team side, I feel like we got some buy in from this team when you got multiple presenters. You know, Keith doing more of the return game, uh, Chad in the coverage side. And, and they've got help. You know, it's not just those two guys running it. Each position guys have roles in it. And we got some buy in. How do you feel about using? stars, offensive guys, or every down guys as return guys. Some people don't like to do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, return piece, uh, whoever's going to return for us, we got deep trust in them that they're going to field the ball, make great decisions with it. And then, yes, want to be dynamic, so we're going to put our dan- a dynamic good decision maker back there. You've got an interesting mix in the defensive secondary of returning guys with experience and also some transfers with experience. How is that kind of mission together? Yeah, it's been competitive. Um, those guys are pushing. I do think they're pretty unified, that group. They're talking, uh, pushing each other. Um, communication back there is vitally important. And you're right. we got a few guys that have you know, been here a couple of years and have played. Got some other guys that are new but have played elsewhere. Um, so it's pretty competitive back there. Anybody, you mentioned Raheem, but is there anybody, you know, when the lights came on during the scrimmage who maybe stood out and you kind of like, oh, maybe we didn't see that in the first couple of times? Yeah. Uh, you know, you know, Nick Marsh made a couple of plays, which I, mean, I guess now start to expect um, out of him. You know, Andrew Brinson made a nice play on a deep ball, uh, deflecting that. I'm thinking about the, just the younger guys. Um, did some good things. Um, yeah. Where, where, how do you guys as a staff sort of approach the four games? And do you, do you map that out strategically? I don't know how you guys did it at Oregon State. Just, what, what's your philosophy? You're talking on the red shirt? Yeah, just yeah. how will you gauge that? Um, you know, this game is so physical. You want to have some, you know, guys ready to go. Some guys might not be ready in the first four, but by if our process is right, by the week eight, nine, and ten, we're you know, still push to get those guys ready there. Um, like I say, you're trying to create depth in general. At the same time, on four games, we want to do right by every player. And if he's not going to play that much, you know, opportunity to redshirt is a really good thing. You mentioned Rakeem. He was so spectacular in track of the throws. And- you see that explosion? Explosion athleticism. And he's picked up the scheme. He's played a couple. Jim's pushing him. He's playing a couple of spots. Um, and so understanding, you know, the playbook, then the communication it takes, let alone the technique and, and all that, he's done a really nice job. Thanks, folks. Appreciate it. Thank Thanks, you. guys. Yeah. Nice job.